God. So ESL decided to sell their English broadcasting rights to Facebook or however that works. I don't really know how those things work, but it just basically means that the main stream is going to be on Facebook and every other stream is still going to be on Twitch and Facebook fucking sucks. It has had several issues so far and I really just want to enjoy an uninterrupted stream because you know when the stream stops you have to get up and refresh and stuff and I'm sitting on my couch. I don't want to get up and go to my computer every 10 to 15 minutes or 30 minutes. So hopefully they improve their production work. But so far the first game is a huge stomp. So I'm going to take this opportunity to do some exercises before BP plays next. That's the match I'm really looking forward to the most. Um, I'm not sure if VP plays later on tonight because there's going to be best of ones and then I think after that, maybe more best of ones, I'm not positive, but I kind of hope to stay up to watch all the matches that I want to watch because I'm that dedicated and it's been a while since I've had exciting Dota to watch and need to take advantage. Okay, this is the first match I have really been looking forward to. I decided to instead watch the Russian stream because it's on Twitch and you know Russian production has always been pretty good, stable and everything so I am not really the type of person I think who cares too much about listening to the casters. I also do have my select favorite casters so if they're not actually casting I don't like listening to other people very much because they tend to just state the obvious, you know, and I don't want to listen to what I'm watching in terms of what's actually happening, the action. Okay, it is 10 p.m. and there's still a lot of Dota to watch, so I have some tea. I honestly can never tell if tea does a very good job at helping me stay awake. I don't feel like I notice it as easily maybe as other people. Hey, holy fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Seriously, if the cat knocked this over, I would have been so mad. Anyways, yeah, we got EG versus Navi next. BB had a rough mid game, but then they ended up stomping towards the end, so that was nice to see. And then I just, I think I'm going to start reading some of my book during this downtime before the draft starts, so looking forward to that. Hi, a quick update. So. It is, let's see, uh, what time is it? Almost 12, and it is the third best of one that I plan on watching, EG versus Navi. And after this, there is LFY versus Newbie, which are two Chinese teams. I really like Newbie, so I will be watching that one as well. And then my plan, <laughs> Oh god, I don't know if I'll make it, but my plan is to wake up at 4 a.m. for the VP match. Um, you know, I've been waiting for over a month to watch them play, so I really want to be able to watch, especially if the hours are not during work. I know it'll be tough to wake up and get out of bed and all that, but I'm pretty determined. I think I'll make it work. So the schedule does seem like it might be lagging behind a little bit. They are cramming. Oh wow. Hold on one second. Massacre going on. Oh my god. Okay, so. <laughs> I think they are trying to cram a little bit too many games today. Like there's a lot of matches going on. So chances are like some games might run long and then it pushes back the schedule. But I'm not actually sure what time the games will end up finishing. Probably early AM. Hello. I set my alarm for 3.30 in the morning. And surprisingly, it wasn't too tough for me to wake up. I feel like it was really easy for me to be pretty alert. Um, shit, my TV is on so loud. But woke up, took a shower right away because I was pretty dirty. I hadn't showered yet. So that helped to wake me up. 
and watch the first game, VP1, and then now I'm taking the time in between the first and second game to make some oatmeal because I need the energy to stay awake for the next game. Um, right now, I, am, I have avocado in here, and I'm about to add some raspberries. Wonderful. Okay, here's what I have. I decided to add avocado and a little bit more oatmeal than I usually do because this is more than just a quick breakfast. It needs to power me for... Actually, there's only one more best of three left, so if I wanted to, I could actually go back to sleep, but <laughs> I don't know um, if I feel like doing that or not. Uh, the female life, honestly. The main reason I don't feel like going back to sleep is I don't want to ruin my hair because I blow dried it and everything. Alright, the second match is about to start and I'm almost done with my food. And I'm actually enjoying it because I feel like this food has a purpose today. Unlike usually, I feel like I just eat breakfast out of obligation. But, sorry if you see food in my mouth. Go VP! Alright, well my boys won 2-0 and their next matchup is actually going to be pretty difficult. They're playing against Team Secret who is performing really well lately and definitely a top 3 team in the world. So, uh, gonna have to give them a lot of good luck for next game. I think they're playing in 2 days, they're not playing tomorrow. But it's 6 a.m. and I could go into work at 7. I don't know if I want to just because it's so dark out. I don't really like that feeling. I like going, I like being out when it's sunny and there's light. So I might go back to sleep for three hours perhaps and then wake back up at 9 and then go into work at my later hours. So, yeah, so backwards my schedule, but you know what? I really enjoyed those games. They were really good. Back for lunch. It's so warm and beautiful outside. I am so excited to be walking her today. And I'm honestly so surprised they're still doing plumbing, but I mean, I'm not home, so I guess the drilling isn't an issue, but I have some exciting news to talk about later on once I am home for work where I have no time limit and limitations. So look forward to that. Aww, they're so cute. Aww, my kitties. <laughs> he is so cute, man. But I have to go back to work. I just wanted to say goodbye to my pussy cat. I know. Wow. You fluffy motherfucker. Yummy. Samuel. Oh. <laughs> I love when his front paws like flare out like this as he comes up. Let me try to get it again. See him? Wow, fine, I'm leaving. Hi, it's Tuesday night and I am here with a Hot Pocket, mainly because I didn't exercise yesterday and there is Dota on at the same time today at eight o'clock. Right now it is 6.45, so I just wanted to make sure I could get my exercise in before Dota if possible and I figured I might as well just eat something for energy so I can work out and then maybe after Dota's done I can decide to cook something for lunch that way I don't eat out but I also did want to just take this opportunity to talk about something really exciting and I'm sure people can guess easily what it is. So this morning I got a call from 
one of the places that I interviewed at last week and I got the job. I received my offer letter this morning from their HR and oh my god it felt so good. Um, I really did have a good feeling about the interview last week even though I did feel like I probably said a little too much but maybe they appreciated my honesty. You know, sometimes people do appreciate that. <laughs> so this is not a remote opportunity, so I do have to go to the office, but it is roughly an 18.5% raise, which is tremendous. I actually think that is really good. So in a sense, I'm a little proud of myself because, you know, I started job hunting, I'd say the end of September. So it has been quite a while and during those few months that I was searching I definitely had some not so great moments at my current workplace that really made me feel rushed in finding another job so I was only at my last job for less than a year and I know it's not ideal to stay at a company for a short duration but I noticed Maybe after the six month period that there were a lot of things about my current company that I just felt like added to my stress. I realized that those aspects of my job would end up constantly making me unhappy at work and I also felt like it was a difficult work environment. So I left for reasons that I think are fair. Um, I think I am just the type of person who really needs organization. Uh, I would like for meetings to be known more than 24 hours in advance, preferably, but same day that occurred very often so it made things very annoying. Um, there were also different aspects such as not knowing the goals of the work that I'm doing. I didn't really know my customer. Um, if there was a demo that occurred, I would be told that they wanted to demo the work that I've been working on, but they wouldn't tell me about who it is for. And I feel like the lack of communication made it difficult for me to stay motivated at my job. And it also made it difficult for me to feel like the work I was doing was important. And I feel like normally that isn't a big deal to me, but a lot of the other factors started becoming bigger deals which made the small aspects that bothered me much bigger. Um, and then there was also just like the co-workers. I wasn't getting along well with one of them. I'm not saying that in the sense that we would be openly rude to each other. Definitely not. But it just made it unpleasant for me to work with him and I didn't like interacting with him either. So. I am really thrilled that this happened. You know, the past few jobs that I've been at, I actually feel like I want to just, <laughs> I'm going to take this next few minutes while the inside of my hot pocket is cooling down to kind of talk about career and life, I guess, because I feel like I have really learned a good amount since I graduated and um, I do have my own preferences that I am starting to really stand up for and I kind of just want to take this moment to say that I feel like a lot of people might feel like it's okay to settle at their job. Um, if people are unhappy at their job they might feel less motivated to apply elsewhere because yes, it does take a lot of effort. It does take a lot of time and it is very tough to apply out when you're not emotionally in a good place. Like if you spend eight hours at work and you're very unhappy there and then you come home and you just want to relax, right? But you have to spend that time applying. I know it's very hard, but maybe just kind of like take it slow. Uh, there were days where I just didn't want to apply at all. I had moments where my confidence was low in being able to find another job, but 
it would kind of be up and down for me. There would be times at work where I was so unhappy that I had a lot of motivation to apply because I was feeling like I need to get out of here. But on the other hand, maybe after a round of interviewing with some companies and not getting an offer, um, I would probably take some time off just to relax and collect myself. Those were the times where I felt like work was a little more bearable because if I wasn't incredibly unhappy at work, I felt like it was okay to not feel as rushed to apply. So I would maybe apply to a couple jobs a day because really, if you think about it, you can't actually dedicate that much time to applying every single day because there just might not be new listings for you to apply to. So you should really just take it a little bit at a time. Apply to a few every day. Um, don't even need to check every day. As long as you make sure that every week you are applying to a few and making sure you stay active. Um, you really want to make sure that you don't end up getting too lazy. Trust me, I am a very lazy person. Like I think I'm incredibly lazy. But that determination, right, and motivation to improve your life and make it happier is very important. So it is tough, it does suck a lot, but just know that if you are persistent, you should pretty much always succeed. Because I have been through this cycle several times because in the past, I have always left my job because I wasn't happy there. So I feel like it was always the same. I was unhappy at my work, so I really wanted to leave so I would just keep applying. And this has happened two times previously. Um, I think my previous job was one of the more urgent ones alongside this one. But I think when I really think about it, after I was able to achieve obtaining my current job and moving to San Diego, I felt like I had more confidence because it actually felt like a pretty big jump to me. Um, you know, I always thought of finding a job out of state really daunting because I had never done it before. I never had much aspirations to leave New Jersey, so I mostly always applied internally. But once I got the idea that I wanted to move here, I decided to really go for it. And actually, what makes it even more satisfying for me to be here is that I actually was in San Diego for a week in February 2017 to kind of trial at this one company before they were willing to hire me full time. And that week I felt like was my one big chance to land that job and move here. But after that week and after getting home, I found out that I didn't get it. So after that, I felt like I was very, you know, upset that I didn't get the job because I missed out on that one difficult to obtain opportunity to move here. And then it really took uh, several months, right? February. And then I ended up moving mid-April. So two months-ish. I guess in hindsight, it doesn't sound like a very long time, but it felt like it was. I guess just being able to get that job before moving here gives me the confidence that even if job hunting really sucks or it takes a while, eventually I feel like I am decent enough at conversation to be able to land a job. It just really depends on the right fit. The right fit to me is that the people that I'm working with, namely the manager and maybe some coworkers, they really understand that personality as well as having the skill set is equally important or maybe personality might be even more important because I can take other examples from my life to kind of develop this but for example um, my landlord said that he was willing to wait for the right tenant instead of feeling rushed to find a tenant right away so even though he had to wait an extra month with no additional rent income, he was still willing to wait for me to become his tenant because 
because on paper and from the way that I present myself, he got the vibe that I was a responsible individual and that I would be an excellent tenant. And so far, I hope that I have really shown him that because I don't miss my rent payments. If he told, if he tells me what my um, utilities bill is, I send him PayPal like in the next five minutes. There's really no reason to delay, right? So in terms of that, I think he really starts to understand that the right person is much more important than you might think compared to other factors that might be prioritized compared to other people because you know I'm going to be staying here for a while and you don't want to find somebody that is going to be difficult to work with someone you have to chase money for so back to work um, I just kind of want to talk about the interview process a little bit more because I have done my rant before in the past about really hating technical interviews and I'll expand on that a little bit more. I just feel like I have a really strong opinion towards it and I'll just say it one more time and then I'll never say it again. But so for this specific company, my initial interview was just with an HR lady just to talk about why I want to leave, um, what work I had done previously, a lot of the very basic along the surface kind of questions. And then after that, I had a call with their technical recruiter who went into more asking me what work I had done previously and a little bit more technological questions, uh, what applications I had worked on, my comfort with languages, stuff like that. And then I had a third phone call with the manager and maybe two other people on the phone. I actually don't remember who were on the phone that day, but that was one I had at like eight in the morning. First thing in the morning, I was like having this interview in bed and it was very similar to the technical recruiter interview, but I think they just wanted to hear firsthand how I answered their questions about my work, um, my experience, my personal rating for my skill set with different languages and technologies, and maybe to further explain the position and what is expected of this position. So it was just a lot of talking and less specific, more just trying to probe and understand what I can bring to the table. And then after that, they scheduled the on-site interview, which I made a video of it last week, which was basically um, like a behavior scenario type of interview where it was star format, which is situation task action and result and it's just for them to understand better how you handle workplace situations how you handle collaboration how you handle adapting to changes all of those important factors of working in a workplace so i felt really good about an interview format like that because i hate pop quiz technical interviews. I kind of call it a pop quiz because they just fire off questions at you constantly. And to me, um, I always try to think of analogies for stuff like this and I know that they don't relate 100%, but I just try to think of it as like, think about if you had a mechanic and he was really, really good at fixing every single problem that could come about, but he wasn't as good at knowing the names of things or explaining his process in determining what the issue is. Um, just the wordy stuff he wasn't as good at, but the actual work he was good at. So I try to think of it like that. When they ask you interviews that are more shotgun questions, it feels like somebody that is just very book smart and memorizes a lot would excel at interviews like that. And I know that's not guaranteed. I mean, like people that actually are very well-rounded will do well in these interviews. That's fine. But I recognize my faults. And one of them is that I, I really can't do something I really don't like to do. So one of them includes studying for interviews that involve this. So for example, one of my interviews last week was the final technical interview for a remote position and they literally 
did that kind of interview with me and I actually wasn't entirely aware it would be like that. I actually thought they would, you know, ask me to write some code for them, but all they did was shotgun questions at me and I just can't do interviews like that. I feel like the second the shotgun starts happening, I get extremely unhappy because I feel like it is not a good way to judge intelligence and how well someone can do the job. Um, I have just always been somebody that is pretty good at problem solving and doing the actual work, but when it comes to explaining stuff, the words, I'm not very good at that. So naturally, those interviews suck ass for me, and I just really feel like, you know, it's a waste of their time, it's a waste of my time. So it would be nice if um, companies would let you know ahead of time what their entire interview process is like. That way you don't spend three hours interviewing with them, and then their last stage is um, a process that I wouldn't have gone through with if I knew ahead of time. Anyways, regardless of that, I am so thrilled. I actually am, it's actually a pretty decent time too because my parents are coming in three weeks so I could try to transition around that time. So I'll have, you know, free time with my parents when they're here and then once they leave, I can start my new job. So I won't actually have to worry about taking time off or anything. I'll just be like in limbo for a couple days and I think that will work out pretty well. And you guys know what that means. I think maybe a month or so, once I feel like I have a good grip of my finances, I am going to that motorcycle store and I'm buying that motorcycle. It is happening within two months, maybe even shorter, because my personality, I am so eager, honestly, if I didn't do my finances today at work and realized that it would not be wise to jump the gun, I was planning on going this weekend, so I just hope things work out. Because <laughs> I am so ready, I'm so ready, but uh, I'm so happy to be sharing this news and really if anybody wants to ask me questions about the process or ask me anything about like job searching life, dealing with stress at work, just feel free to ask me and talk to me about it. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about these things, so I would love to discuss it with somebody else if they want to. So I think my Hot Pocket is cold now, but I'm going to eat it and exercise before some amazing Dota again tonight. <laughs>